5 continues to talk about Jesus as our priest and as a sympathetic advocate. But I think the greater message in this chapter is what it means to actually be obedient. It doesn't mean that we're robots. It doesn't mean that we sometimes struggle with the will of God. You know, I think the reason we have unresolved areas of disobedience in our lives is because, well, we don't resolve them. We try to overcome them in our own flesh and in our own strength instead of talking to Jesus about them. There's a line in a song we sing that says, Lord, wrestle us and win. Now that refers to Jacob wrestling with God. It also refers to David talking to God about those hard issues of life. And it speaks to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, crying and submitting to the will of the Father. That's what God wants for us. He wants us to come to him with everything, even our struggles. That's what it means to have a personal relationship with Christ. He's a big God and our doubts, our sin, our areas of disobedience, he's bigger than all of it. Matter of fact, it's in the wrestling with him that we experience his holy power, his gentle heart, and then we come to truly surrender. Then our efforts towards obedience are no longer out of fear or ritual, but out of love, understanding, and a reverent relationship with our Savior. Listen to verse 8 and 9. Even though Jesus was God's son, he learned disobedience from the things he suffered. In this way, God qualified him as a perfect high priest, and he became the source of eternal salvation for all those who obey him.